The MacBook has become a staple of many professionals. Now, with apps like Crossover and macOS Sonoma, to this day, it continues to be a top pick. My MacBook is the second most useful device I own, and even though this is the 16-inch MacBook, my big hands almost make this laptop feel much smaller. Even still, undoubtedly, it is a huge laptop with a massive screen to match. The M2 MacBook Pro is probably the best performing laptop you can get in this form factor, whether you consider the M2 Max or the 14-inch M2 Pro, but we'll save that for later. So this MacBook. Design-wise, this is probably the best-built laptop you can get, despite the absolute bonkers Don't price tag of $2,000 on the low end and up to $3,500 on For the most decked out 16-inch MacBook, you will pay over $6,500. My introduction to Apple Silicon was much different with the M1 MacBook Pro. However, nowadays things are a lot less clear-cut, as the chips you get now in MacBooks aren't the same. Or so while prices haven't exactly come down, the amount of performance you get per dollar spent has increased. Now whether or not you should get a Windows machine is a personal preference, and the reasons to get a Windows machine are there. However, if you're looking from a pure dollar standpoint, either is fine. Apple now makes machines that will do more than what you need and do it on almost no power. The performance of these Macs chips is nothing less than impressive. While pricey, very well built, I've been using my MacBook off and on. However, when I do use my Mac, usually doing most of the channel editing on my Mac, at times there will be noticeable stuttering when pushing the RAM limits, which is a good point to make. Performance is something everyone will look at differently, however the M2 Pro has a different way of handling tough programs. That almost make you forget you're literally working on a laptop. If you get the M2 Pro, you want to consider that there's only 16 gigabytes of RAM, which while not bad, it is generally the bare minimum you'd want for a system that cost over $2,000. You would expect slightly more considering you cannot add more RAM after you purchase. Surprisingly, I've never hit the RAM limit or a point where the machine starts stuttering, even when editing with tons of tabs open. However, another note, when gaming on my Mac, I can see a small stutter. However, the memory doesn't seem to be getting maxed out, so there's likely some stuttering from a software bottleneck. I don't see RAM use going above 8 gigabytes, so there's likely a GPU limitation or something. This laptop, all bulky and heavy, doesn't feel overbearing. Something I've always liked about Macs is their all-metal body, giving them a slightly premium feeling. However, the added weight is something you want to remember as well. This laptop, even for the size and relative performance, is fairly heavy, and when you add the charging brick you get with the box, that weight and something like a backpack will just continue to grow. Overall, when trying to use this Mac outside of my house or workspace, it's actually slightly annoying. The large size and heavy weight just kind of make this Mac unwieldy. It's not unmanageable by any stretch. However, the much smaller and lighter 14 inch already is starting to sound like a more enticing offer. The MacBook Pro has never been an issue handling a task. It's actually really tough finding something this Mac doesn't absolutely crush. From CPU benchmarks to gaming, the M2 Pro is hands down the best Mac I've ever used. That's not to say it's the best version of the MacBook they make right now. From a long term use perspective, if you want a general off the rip recommendation, get the M2 Max 14 inch. The 14 likely has many more years of support, and seemingly the 13 inch is going to be getting the boot. As of right now, the 13 inch, despite being an Apple silicone chip, does not have a newer design. I think it's safe to say getting one now is a bad idea. And the 14 inch is the only way to get the Mac experience. I think the extra power left on the shelf with the M2 Max is worth it. Not only will you get added RAM and more hard drive space, and gaming seems to be the way Apple is headed for the new generation of Macs. I think it's only a matter of time before we start seeing even bigger moves than we already have, with Apple seemingly targeting gaming for their next line of focus. With the full release of Game Porting Toolkit, we should start to see developers take advantage of porting tools for the games, and potentially we'll start getting well-made games for the Mac. However, right now you want to make sure you get a chip with enough GPU cores, which appears to be Apple's performance metric, but the M2 Pro still leaves very little to be desired. Right now it kind of feels like Apple is still in the finding your legs phase, and it will be some more time before Apple Silicon is completely ready to take on x86. One thing that needs to be considered is that with M2 and Apple Silicon, everything is on SOC. So Apple is taking on Micron, AMD, Intel, and Nvidia simultaneously. Apple chips perform well in productive tasks, however in gaming there's still tons of room for optimization, along with parts in general just being things that could be improved. For example, there's an issue that causes Adobe Premiere Pro to slow down whenever you use it to scale to full screen mode. It starts to slow down and stutter, which has been a problem for some time. Now, once you get past the hiccups or random quirks, you actually get one of the best performing laptops in history. Prices of the MacBook haven't actually changed that much, and seemingly the price at times will actually go down. Now, sure, Apple has been known to overcharge and underperform. The MacBook has almost been around $2,000 for the bigger 15 or 16 inch pros. However, that price being the same on the bottom end doesn't mean everything is the same. Now, the most expensive MacBook you can get is $1,000 more. So for $3,500, you'll have the most powerful baseline model MacBook available. And for that price, Apple makes one of the most solid laptops on the market. This has become somewhat of an undisputed fact, and lots of people have been paying close attention to how Apple designs their laptops for a long time. So this MacBook is, of course, no exception. The all-metal body and Super Retina display 
make this laptop absolutely outstanding. The keyboard, in usual Apple fashion, is excellent as well. The travel time is low with the tactile fill when pressed all the way down. Due to the size of the keys and the layout when typing, it's actually fairly difficult to press two keys at once with the same finger. Now the keyboard is just a keyboard, and how you feel about it will be up to you, but the keys are nice and I haven't had any problems with them functionally. One thing I would like is an easy way to clean under the keycaps, so things that do fall down there aren't a huge problem. Taking them off is pretty much a hassle, and putting them back on is as well. So I got my MacBook Pro really late, and it seems like even still more performance is being unlocked every day. Now what I mean by that is Crossover is using Apple's new game porting toolkit, and that makes it amazing. And the newest versions do pretty well in games. There is still work to be done because these games aren't actually natively running with Crossover, but if that happens, the gaming performance could almost be double. One thing, depending on when you're seeing this, we may have already had Apple's October 30th event, Scary Fast. We may get M3 MacBooks, which will hopefully come with even better gaming performance. I'm not sure if we'll see any new MacBooks. However, I think we may see some interesting hardware nonetheless. So I would wait for that if it hasn't happened already. There's no reason to jump the gun at this point, but the MacBook Pro is a great machine, and to put it plainly, it doesn't matter which configuration you get. Generally, I would say get these M2 Pro chips, as their performance is pretty unmatched, and I've enjoyed and I've enjoyed every moment of my Mac. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, then you can leave a like and subscribe, and if you didn't, then you can tell me why you hate it in the comments, and uh, everything that I did wrong, and why I suck, and thank you. Bye.